Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. I hope everybody's getting along well here. Take a look. Look what we got going on here. What is this? Could this be our next name storm? Could this be Alex? Well, guess what? Let's take a look because look at this. This is quite a significant, persistent area of thunderstorms. And we're going to go over all the model data and see what we have the chances are going in to later this week. Let's get into it. All right, so here's the area of concern we're going to continue to watch, especially earlier in the week here. 10% chance. You know, it, it does have a narrow window of opportunity to develop. And there's that system down here into Central America. I think it has a better chance if it can make it to the Eastern Pacific. We have less than a 2% chance down here with this system into the Central America and the Eastern Pacific. But it's 10% here into the Northeast, North Central Gulf of Mexico. So if you're in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, the Pan handle Florida definitely a big rainmaker here but we'll see if this system can develop any some sort of tropical characteristics over the next 24 48 hours here all right so here's the visible satellite picture there is the center of circulation you can really see it here the heaviest shower and thunderstorm activity is on the northeast side and then the southwest side here so we'll continue to watch this it only has about a day or so um, before it does move on shore it'll probably likely move on shore right around Mississippi, Alabama, or the Florida Panhandle, for that matter. You can see it's kind of moving up like this at the time being. So we'll continue to watch it here. It looks pretty interesting. We'll take a look at the modeling here as well. All right, so taking a look at the water vapor loop over this system. There it is. There's the center of circulation. You got some thunderstorms developing on the north, east, and southwest side of the system. Uh, take a look at the dry air. There is an area of dry air that if this does wrap around, it could eventually inhibit development, but I don't really think that's going to move to the northeast. It's probably going to pivot, you know, south and east here and eventually erode on out. So, yeah, this system, it has some things going for it here. You know, it is rather disorganized at the moment, but it's got a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity, and it does have a low-level circulation here in the center of the uh, circle here so here we go thanks to tropicaltidbits.com here it is there's the tracks on the gfs you know bringing it northeast like this so we will watch this system you know some of the models bring it up pretty quickly into here so it does have a narrow window you know of opportunity here for development but we'll continue to watch it here uh, for any potential development. All right, so whether this thing becomes a named storm or a tropical depression or subtropical storm remains to be seen. It does have a very window, narrow window of opportunity for development here. But here it is on the GFS, persistent showers and thunderstorms into your Monday here. Here it is. It's continuing. So like I says, it has Sunday, Sunday night, Monday, early Monday for potential development before it moves inland and becomes pretty much a big heavy rain developer you see here later monday we continue with the showers and thunderstorms so this could maybe develop into something but for the most part by this point a tuesday we still have some showers and thunderstorms around but then this trough to the west look at this big area of showers and thunderstorms and severe weather moves east and kicks this system out so here we go sea surface temperature anomalies yeah this is why i'm a little bit concerned that maybe this system might have the potential to develop before it moves inland early this week because it has about a three degree celsius uh anomaly here in the northeast gulf that's really really warm so it's crossing over a very warm area pocket of sea surface temperatures and look at this these are warming out pretty quickly out here off the east coast um, we do have a cooler than average though into the eastern caribbean and out into the intertropical convergence zone uh, but this time of year we're really not looking at any development out here anyway so definitely we continue to watch the gulf as the area open for business so here we go. We're starting off with the big picture here. Thanks to tropicaltidbits.com. Take a look at this. So we got this stalled low out here in the central Atlantic. Probably not going to develop, but you always have to watch that this time of year. And there's that stalled out frontal boundary, the tail end of it. that could promote something in the next, say, between now and Monday. And then the Central America here, this low pressure system, if it can make it to the Eastern Pacific, it has a much better chance, not likely to develop here into the Caribbean. As we head in time here, there's that high pressure staying pretty far to the west so any systems will be either steered into the gulf of mexico or across central 
America into the eastern Pacific here. So we're not looking at any systems recurving up the east coast anytime soon, if any were to develop. But there's that low continuing to sit right out here in the center of the Atlantic. It does it cannot move to the northeast because of this big old high pressure system. And look at that. Moisture continues to flow from the Caribbean up into the southeast here. So um, with that system, we'll have to see if this has any chance of development. Even if it doesn't, look at the heavy rain across parts of the southeast here. Um, and as we head throughout time, that slowly moves to the northeast. Um, and then it's kicked out by this trough to the west. And then you continue to see this low just sit out here. Yeah, this could, might potentially become a subtropical low because look at this strong high pretty much blocking it here uh, from the east. And as we continue to head throughout time here, take a look at this. We don't have any large-scale areas. There's that low continuing out by the Azores. So, yeah, we might have something here. We'll have to see that could. Maybe that'll become our first name storm. We'll see here how it plays out. GFS continuing to show a hurricane here in the eastern Pacific. Uh, this is right around uh, Memorial Day, so take this with a grain of salt. But nevertheless, it is interesting to watch here. Okay, so for the rest of your Sunday, yeah, we're looking at a severe weather threat slight risk here from northern Virginia all the way to northern New England. As far as a tornado threat, that's going to be confined mainly to parts of northern Maine, northern New England, into southeastern Quebec. Hail threat, there it is, in the, down into parts of New York State, and wind, a pretty good risk here, 15% chance around any given point as we get into your Monday. This shifts to the southwestern part of Texas into the southeast. You got a little marginal threat here. The tornado threat is definitely there across parts of Texas, so watch out for that. It's not going to be a major outbreak. Uh, but definitely watch for that as that shifts into Tuesday. There we go. Just, just south of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you got that slight risk of severe thunderstorms. And then going to days four through eight, the only day we have a highlighted here. Definitely watch out for this. It could get pretty interesting into parts of southeastern Texas into Louisiana here as we head through into your Wednesday. All right, so what's the rest of your... Uh, Sunday here showing across the Northeast. Well, this is what we're getting into here. Yes, we're getting into a pretty solid line of thunderstorms. Maybe a couple lines forming. There's the low pressure system. So we're getting closer to a tornado threat into parts of northern New England here. But as we head throughout the rest of the afternoon into the evening hours, take a look at this. We get quite a conglomeration of thunderstorms throughout the Catskills, Poconos, Hudson Valley region here. This is where we could be looking at damaging wind, large hail, even down into parts of Virginia here as well. And then you get into northern New England here where the tornado threat is much greater here. And as we take a look, you know, those start to weaken as they head east throughout the evening and into the overnight Sunday night into Monday. And look at that. We eke out a pretty nice day for the most part. We will have some showers developing here across parts of the Appalachians, you know, later in the day on Monday. But, you know, that'll spread some cloudiness and whatnot. But we'll stay, you know, pretty clear here into Tuesday. Take a look at that. Uh, a pretty nice day. Uh, as well here. So a significant tornado parameter for the Northeast as we head into later Sunday afternoon and evening. This, you know, this is the concern here. If we get into, you know, later afternoon into evening across parts of New England here, uh, we're getting values in excess of one here. This is pretty far north. So, you know, one, 1 1.5. And look at that. Southeastern Quebec, we're getting some areas approaching, you know, two, 2.53 into some of the orange zones here. As we get into Sunday evening, that diminishes pretty quick as we head, you know, throughout the evening into the overnight, Sunday night. In the and here we go, CAPE, the convective available potential energy. Quite a bit to work with here, uh, just east of the front during the mid to latter part of the afternoon on Sunday. Take a look at that. So severe thunderstorm threat running pretty high here across parts of eastern Pennsylvania heading into New Jersey later this evening and into New England here as well. You know, you're pushing in excess of, you know, 2,000, 2,500 joules per kilogram. That is pretty significant here uh, for the Northeast. That tapers off pretty quickly as you get into your Monday and look at that the rest of the week or at least the first part of the week, we don't have any threats of severe weather. So here we go, the rapid refresh model. Yeah, there's severe thunderstorm potential here in eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, Catskills, Poconos, and New York, another few complexes here. These, some of these isolated cells could produce damaging wind, large hail. And then look at here in northern New England. That's the tornado threat up there. As we head throughout the afternoon into the early evening hours, that pushes into eastern Pennsylvania, the Hudson Valley region, eastern Catskills, 
Watch this in New Jersey later on Sunday evening here. And here we go, Maine. That is the spot we're watching for tornado development, you know, this afternoon as that diminishes pretty quickly as we head through the overnight Sunday night. And taking a look at the high-resolution Euro here, yeah, there is that front, that frontal boundary pretty much moving through the northeast here later in the weekend here into the early part of the start of the new work week here. You can see high pressure pretty much remaining anchored here off the southeast coast. It's pretty blocking at this point, so this front will make little headway as it heads to the southeast here through the first part of the week. And as you can see, we have stalled out showers and thunderstorms pretty much every day. Look at this. We'll have to watch for this because some of these could definitely become severe in time during your Tuesday. Take a look at that as we head further into time here. Take a look. It is a stormy week here across the southeast into the central plains here with a lot of complexes of showers and thunderstorms likely here. As we look at that, high pressure is pretty much in control of the northeast here into early Wednesday, but that is going to change here. As you see, this front approaches from the west here later Wednesday, and it's more like Thursday into Friday for the northeast uh, that this system will be slowly pivoting to the east. This high pressure pretty strong, though, so it'll take a little bit of energy here to push this eastward. All right, so for the northeast, you know, after a really warm, toasty day here, especially across parts of the northeast, getting well into the mid to upper 80s here, what's the start of the week here into the rest of the week showing? Well, we get, you know, we get into the 70s here, the parts of the mid-Atlantic into southern New England here, but its interior sections, we're going to stay in the 60s for the most part here across parts of interior New York, Pennsylvania, and into northern New England might struggle to get out of the 50s here for your Monday. But as we head throughout the night, Monday night, look at that, cooling down to the 40s, some interior areas. We warm it up pretty quickly here across parts of the northeast, getting into the 70s, into parts of western New England, New York, Pennsylvania, and mid to upper 70s into parts of Ohio here. And as we head throughout the night, you know, we cool down into the 40s across parts of New England. Again, good sleeping water, weather here. But as we head into Wednesday, there we go. We get, you know, temperatures building into the 80s here into parts of Ohio and western Pennsylvania and getting well into the 70s in parts of interior New York and Pennsylvania. Thursday, we will warm it up nicely as well. Look at that. We're getting into the you know, 80s into parts of Virginia and Maryland here, but running a little cooler here. It almost looks like we're having uh, a marine layer influence here into parts of New England in southeastern upstate New York here. All right, John from Hicksville, New York area this past Saturday, May 21st. Look at that. Very hot and hazy and humid across the area. You can see there's a layer of blue sky here in the background, but you can see almost like a layer of a little bit of haze in the background here with these kind of temperatures. It was a scorcher across the Northeast. All right, let's take a look at the CFS medium range model here. Always gives us a good idea going throughout the rest of the month into June. So yeah, we're pretty much staying here with this ridge here across the Northeastern North America here. And you can see, look at this troughiness up here by Greenland. We got another trough out here, but look at this ridging out West. That's usually leads to eventually to troughing pushing east here. Let's see if that actually happens here as we head throughout the week a little bit. It's actually a pretty blocky pattern here. Look at this. High pressure really dominating the east here. That should help us warm, rebound quickly behind this front. Trough here kicking across the western states. Let's see what happens with that as the week wears on here into next Friday, into Saturday, June 4th, the first weekend of June. Take a look at that. We're trying to hold on to this ridginess here across the east, and it's pretty well working. You know, it's been pretty unsettled here in the Pacific Northwest, and there's that ridge up there into the Gulf of Alaska. And as we continue on in time here, that is the pattern. This is nice. You know, back east here, a lot of ridging. It'll be temperatures running at least slightly above average, if not higher. And look at that. We start to get maybe a little bit of cutoff low activity but this is the mid part of june by this point so it won't be that cold and look at that as we head later into june wow this uh upper level low kind of sets up sop here across the northeast so this might lead eventually 
to cooler than average temperatures across the northeast later on into June. But we'll see. That might end up just being a blip on the screen here. Extended outlook for my hometown viewers. Being into Scranton's upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York and in northeast Pennsylvania. Upper Susquehanna River Valley, Monday through Friday here, we're looking at partly sunny skies both Monday and Tuesday. It'll be a cool start to the week at only 68, 47 is a low, but look at that. By Tuesday, we're warming up into the mid-70s into Wednesday as well. But then we have a chance of showers later in the day Wednesday with the next front moving in from the west. Thursday and Friday, we'll have probably a quarter inch on average as showers persist through the end of the week and temperatures drop into the lower 70s. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Northeastern. As always, go over to my social media pages at Hurricane Northeastern to follow me for the tropics at MediaMark. Also, Weather Northeastern on Facebook. It's at Weather Eastern on Twitter, MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com. There is a link to my 2022 Hurricane Outlook down below in the description at the end of this video as well, popping up on the screen. If you haven't watched that already, go ahead and watch it. I give you a complete breakdown of this hurricane season 2022. And as always, subscribe, hit the bell button if you haven't already. Question or comment down below. I love to read your questions or comments. Thanks for joining me 